whether you're a Shopify developer or not, if you use Shopify, chances are you'll encounter your store source code or your Shopify store source code, which is mostly written in HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and of course, Liquid. If you're a developer, you probably know already what HTML is, CSS is, JavaScript is, but Liquid, what is Liquid? Is that something that you lick? Lick with? That was not a good joke, is it? Jokes aside, in this video, we're gonna be talking about liquid programming so you can understand what is happening behind the scenes of your Shopify store. Stay tuned for that. Before we start this video, this video is sponsored by me. If you're interested to learn how to create Shopify themes, you can enroll to my course, Shopify Theme Development Course. And in that course, I will teach you how to create a Shopify theme from scratch. I will teach you anything that you need to know to create a functional Shopify theme. If you're interested, I'll put the link in the video description below and use the coupon code. You can use the coupon code LIQUID to get 30% off of your purchase. Alright, let's go back to the video. So before we start learning Liquid or how to code using Liquid, let's understand first what is Liquid. So Liquid is a template language created by Shopify and is written mostly in Ruby. It is mainly used for controlling or maintaining what is happening to your, what is happening in front end. Or basically it, is, um, it controls the flow of your Shopify store. So you can consider Liquid as a back-end programming language. HTML, CSS, JavaScript are what you're seeing in your browser, in your front end, and then Liquid is what's working, or basically Liquid is the guy who works behind the scene to control or to maintain your Shopify store. You can think of it like a cereal bowl. So basically the cereal is the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and then the milk that you pour in here is basically liquid, because it is. It's liquid. So you mix them and voila, you have a cereal bowl. You have a Shopify store. I think the milk is expired. On a serious note though, if you take a look at your development store or your Shopify store's code editor, you will see there are a bunch of codes that starts with curly braces, not the JSON codes. What I'm trying to say is the double curly braces or curly braces followed by percentage symbols. Those codes are liquid codes. But don't worry, we're going to talk about more of this later on so you get an idea what are they. So, first of all, liquid codes are categorized in three parts objects, filters, and then tags. So objects is basically what you use to tell Shopify or Liquid what to render or display in front end. So to put this simply, basically objects is like an echo statement from PHP or C out of C++. So you're basically telling Shopify if you use an object, you're basically rendering the value of that object. So say for example, a variable. So you can use that variable as an object and then Shopify will think of it or Liquid will think of it as an object and then, oh, I will render the object, I will render the value of this variable. So you probably get an idea now how to create or use an object. So you need to start with double curly braces and then inside of that curly braces, you need to apply or provide an object or a variable. Okay, so let's open our code editor. So select edit code and it should open our code editor. And then let's open our templates folder. It should be this one, close the layout, close everything. Open the templates and open the index.liquid and we should have the following objects. So content for index is an object that displays the content of your homepage. So basically that's what you're seeing here in the homepage. So if we get rid of this and if we save this and if we refresh our page, our homepage, we should have nothing but header and then footer. So now going back in here in our index.liquid, we can start creating our first object. So say for example, let's create an object. So like I said, to create an object, create double curly braces. And inside of this, between these curly braces, just type the object. So for example, let's use shop. And then to use an attribute, we're going to add dot symbol and then the attribute name, which is name. So if we save this, 
And if we open our browser again, and if we refresh our homepage, we should have the following name of our Shopify store. Now, obviously, there are a lot of attributes or objects that you can use in your Liquid code. There's the shop that we used, and then there's the product, collection, page, customer, etc., etc. Okay, so now that we know how to create objects, let's learn how to use filters. Now filters, they're the ones that changes the output of your objects. So say for example, we have a string value, hello world, and everything is in lowercase. So if we use a filter called uppercase, basically the uppercase filter will make the following string uppercase. So this string is what we're going to see in our, in our browser, in our front end. So that's filter, something that changes the output of an object. So let's go back to our code editor. And here in our index.liquid, we have the following object shop.name, right? So shop is the object and then name is the attribute from shop. Now to add or to use a filter, all you need to do is to add a pipe symbol after the attribute or the object. So let's just add a pipe symbol. You can find that on your keyboard just above the shift key or the right shift key. And then after the pipe symbol, just add a filter. Say for example, let's use upcase. Now if we save this, and if we refresh our homepage, as you can see, the name of our store is displayed in an uppercase form. Now it's also possible to use one or more filters in one object. So you're not limited to just one filter. Now say for example, now we're using an upcase filter, right? Now if you want to add another filter, all you need to do is just to add another pipe symbol and this time we'll use another filter. Say for example, let's use the filter called prepend. So prepend is a filter that adds a, a string value before the object or the value of the object. So say for example, prepend. And if we honestly save this, it's not going to work because some filters requires you to add or to pass a value or a parameter. So let's try and save this. It worked. So if we refresh our page, as you can see, we got an error that says liquid error wrong number of arguments given one expected two. So we need to pass a value for our prepend filter. So to add a value or to pass a value, all you need to do is just to use colon after the prepend filter and then space or just add double quotes or single quotes and then between of these quotes just add a text say for example hello and then space just to separate the um, the value of the shop name and then the hello world or the hello word the word hello let's try and save this honestly and if we refresh our home page we should have the following output so hello space which is from the prepend so hello space and then weekly how theme development and there you go that's how you use filters so to put it simply tags are the ones who control what is happening in your Shopify store so basically they're the ones who control the flow of your Shopify store the logic of your Shopify store is that a fly what the hell now there are three types of tags there's the variable assignment there's the control flow and there's the iteration if you're a developer or if you have an experience with coding you'll definitely find this very easy to understand if not just keep watching and I'll show you the way now before we start learning the types of tags let's understand first how to create a tag Creating a tag is like creating an object. So previously we were using double quotes or double quotes, double curly braces. But this time we're just going to need to create set of curly braces and then a set of percentage symbols. And then between those, we're going to use a tag. So say for example, we're going to use a tag like assign to create a variable. So that being said, let's start off with variable assignments. So variable assignment tags are the tags that you use for creating variables. Now there are four tags that you can use for creating variables. There's the assign tag, there's the capture tag, and there's the increment, and there's the decrement tag. So let's try and create a variable using the assign tag. So going back to index.liquid, before the shop.name, let's create a tag by typing a set of curly braces, opening close curly braces and then between this let's create two percentage symbols and then between this percentage symbols we're going to use the assign tag so assign and then followed by the name of the variable so say for example let's just name this greeting 
and then we need to give this a value because this assign basically you're assigning a value to this variable so we need to use equal sign symbol and then followed by the value that you want to assign it's either an integer true or false boolean and so on so for characters string and so on and so forth so let's just give this a value of a string value let's just type hello so we're basically just passing the hello and then we can use this variable here in our prepend filter so instead of passing a string value we're going to use the greeting variable so greeting so if we save this and if we refresh our home page and we should have the same output because we're basically just sending or just outputting the same value so hello and then space and then the name of our shopify store so let's try and change the value of the greeting variable say for example let's change this to welcome hit save let's refresh our home page and as you can see this time it's saying welcome weekly health theme development Now with control flow tags, these are the tags that you use to create a programming logic. These tags are basically the if statement, the if else statement, else if statements, and so on and so forth. Now there are only four control flow tags that you can use in Liquid. There's the obviously the if statement, there's the if else, there's the else if, and lastly it's the case and when. If is basically the if statement, if else is basically an if else statement, else if is basically just if, else if, and then else statement, and then lastly is the case and when, which is basically the equivalent of switch and case. So let's try and use an if statement. So let's go back to our index.liquid and first of all, let's create another variable. So let's just copy the assign tag and then paste it just below the greeting variable. And instead of greeting, let's just change this to renderer. And then instead of a string value, let's replace this with true. Then let's create an if statement that checks if the renderer variable is equal to true. If it is, then we're going to render the shop name and use the filter upcase and prepend to prepend the value of greeting variable. So after this, we need to close the if statement. So to do that, we need to create another tag, but this time instead of if, we're going to use and if so most tag you are required to close it so if you're using say for example an if statement you need to close it with and if if you're using a for loop you need to use an and for so let's just indent all of this properly or just the object shop name so we can read it properly so if we save this and if we refresh our home page we should have the same output and that's because the value of renderer is set to true and the if statement if renderer is equal to true that is true so that makes the shop name or that will display the value of shop name and then use the upcase and then prepend filter now what if we set the value of renderer to false so let's try that false hit save let's refresh our home page and there we go as you can see we don't have anything anymore and that's because our if statement is false so now that we have an idea how to use an if statement, let's use another conditional statement or control flow tag, and that is the else. So underneath of the shop name, let's create another tag. And then this time we're going to use the else. And then underneath of this, we're going to use, um, let's just type a string value here. Say for example, let's type, sorry, I cannot render anything at the moment. So if you want, you can close this or you can just wrap this with paragraph tag, like so. And if we honestly try and save this, we should have the, sorry, I cannot render anything at the moment. And that's because, like I said, the renderer is set to false. Now, if we set this to true, we should have the name of our Shopify store. There you go. And last but not the least, we should have the iteration tags. So iteration tags are basically the tags that repeats a code or runs a code, a blocks of code repeatedly until a condition returns false. 
So basically, iteration tags are the looping statements like the for, for each, while, do while, and so on and so forth. So in Liquid, there are only three iteration tags that you can use. It's the for loop, it's the cycle, and then the table row. For is basically a for each statement, and cycle is basically a looping statement that renders a group of strings in the order that they are assigned or passed. And table row is a looping statement that renders or generates rows for HTML tables. So let's try and create an iteration tag or let's try and use the for loop. So here in our index.liquid, let's just create a for tag here underneath of the renderer variable. So create a tag and then for and then followed by the name of the variable. So here we're going to create a variable. So say for example, let's just create a variable called number. And you know what? We're going to create, we need to create an array for this for loop. So underneath of the renderer, we're going to create another variable. You know what? Let me just copy this, paste it underneath. And this time we're going to call this numbers. And then we're going to create a string value so let's just create double quotes or single quotes depends on you it doesn't really matter doesn't matter if it's single quotes or double quotes so let's just create a string value and pass a value of one and then we're going to separate the numbers with comma symbol and then two comma three comma and four and then we're going to use the filter called split to create an array so basically split as the um, the explode of PHP so split and then we're going to pass a value and we're going to use comma so the comma that we used here is basically the separator for the numbers so now we have one comma two comma three comma four so if we use the split filter we'll basically have the one two three and four this will make our numbers variable an array so if we save this and here oh, all right so we got an error that's because we are not finished yet with our for loop so let's continue here in our for after the number use in and then we're going to use the numbers variable so for each number in numbers variable so we're creating a variable and then we're using the numbers variable which uh, if you read it properly, it reads as for each number, for each number in numbers variable. So that is the one, two, three, and four. So basically for each iteration, the value of number is one. And after the loop, it goes two. After the loop goes three. After the loop goes four and so on. So after that, we need to close this with and four. So create another tag. And then we're going to use the and for. And then inside of this for tag, we're going to render the number object. So use an object and just use the number object. Now, if we save this and if we refresh our home page, we should have one, two, three, four, and then welcome weekly health theme development. And there you have it, that's liquid programming. And obviously, I just covered the surface of liquid programming. I really talk about Shopify objects, filter, tags, and so on and so forth. So if you're interested, I highly recommend you take my course, Shopify theme development course, if you want to learn more about Shopify theme development. And of course, you can use the coupon code LIQUID to get 30% off. Anyway, I hope this video helped you understand what is Liquid and how to use it. If you think that this video helped you, I would really appreciate if you liked this video. If you want more Shopify theme development related videos, you can subscribe and hit that notification bell button so you won't miss my future uploads. And again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.